Got a Frisbee. I don't like that Frisbee. That's the dirty toy. I don't like the dirty toy. Don't bring the dirty toy over here. Turbo set? Good set. Uh-uh-uh. 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 There you go. Good boy, Turbs. Okay. okay. <laughs> I guess now I have to throw it since I put it on your face like that. There you go. Not a great throw. That was from the left hand. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Beautiful day. Kind of cool out, but I'm not hating it. I'm kind of actually appreciating a little bit of a cool off before the heat of summer really kicks in to full effect. Plenty of work to do this week in this video. I'm going to try and just nail it down to a couple of projects though, for you know the sake of cohesiveness. And I'm thinking I may want to plant some stuff up there on this hill along that wall. I don't know, I'm gonna think about that. It's an idea I've had for a few years, but just never acted on it. And I figure I'm doing all this other stuff that I wanna do for a long time. Why not give that a try too? By all the other things, I mean, uh, rehedging, new hedging, fruit trees and shrubbery and just, it just you know, add in lots of stuff and that I've wanted to do for a long time. But first, before I do any of that, we've got the, the the, well, it's sad. Sometimes these things happen. Very sad little cactus. Don't really know. Well, I do know what happened here. It fell over for like two weeks behind something. I didn't see it and that that's what it did. Easy enough to fix. Get it into some fresh potty mix into its own new container because now the problem is I can't get the thing to stand up on its own. So uh, I'm going to just pop it into a new container. No standard cactus repotting stuff. Make it nice. This is an all-purpose potting mix that I added some perlite to and some bark chunks. Not really standard for what you would do for cactus and succulents, but you know, it really is all about how you water the plant. So the main thing is just to not soak this thing constantly and it should be fine. It's in a nice breathable container. I just, I don't, I don't, I wasn't going to go out and buy a bag of cactus mix just to repot one sad little cactus over here. And the base of this is an Espoma potting mix, which from my experience, talked about this in my last video, drains very, very well. Sometimes too well, in fact. I've potted aeroids into Espoma mix before and never had any problems, just like straight up Espoma potting mix, potting soil. I judge it off the weight of the bag. If it's a heavy bag that feels more, I don't want to use the word mucky because then that's bad representation for that brand. Generally, the bags are very lightweight and fluffy. It's coconut base. I've gotten a couple before that were much heavier that clearly were going to retain more water. Those I would not use, but this, this is good. Light and fluffy. It'll have nice sharp drainage and I added to it. That's really what makes all the difference in the world is just adding a few things to the mix so that it can be nice and airy and drain properly and that <laughs> normally take care of things. I'm thinking I might need to uh, possibly add a stake to this. No, I'm going to top dress it and that will help weigh this down. Just having something on top of the soil will help keep that in place. And I'll maybe recenter that. Let me go grab my stones that I was going to put in there. Okay, I don't, there's no pea gravel around here. So fire glass, that'll work, right? I mean, it's the same difference as gravel. It's just glass. It's fine. Really, I'm just doing this to add some weight into this container to help hold it down and to have a layer of something on top of the soil because little weeds will start popping up in here. I had to say this like five different times because my hand keeps moving out of frame here. The other reason I'm doing this is to add some support for the cactus. As you can see here, it just wants to flop over and until this rehydrates and gets better light, it's not going to stand back up. I think the glass bits are probably a good way to go for this because the shape on these, see that irregular shape to them? I think these will allow for more airflow than some gravels would that would pile up together. You don't want anything pushed up against the sh base, almost said shaft, too tightly because that can cause rot. Need airflow around the bases of the plants. There we go. Yep, that'll do it. Totally fix that sad little thing. I know what you're thinking. No, this is not a commercial break on Fox News or one of your sporting channels. I just need to get that some more light, get it rehydrated, and it'll stand right back up on its own. No blue pills needed. I was thinking since I have the stuff out here, I should probably repot my variegated potato, but I don't know, I don't know where it went. Mother's Day, a family member asked me if they could help me out with anything, and I said, sure, could you clear the table? Because there's some stuff on here, some plants and 
like some pruners and those things and the potato was here the variegated potato and i came out and they had moved all of the plants and just kind of tossed them willy-nilly over here and i had a look at it to make sure nothing was in the direct sun but it's been a few days and i'm having trouble there it is just around the corner this is the agave potatatorum cannot say the name on this one potatorum lonky beautiful variegated agave and i was going to pot it up in this orange pot that's what made me think to repot this was i was looking at this container going that would actually look pretty cool if the pot were orange or gray or black that pretty much anything but just a plain gray clay pot the blue would look nice and that made me think oh i should repot the potato i don't know if this is the pot i want to use size wise it's fine there's nothing wrong with this that'll work but i would like to have this in something whiter than this do i have another orange pot? i think i have another orange pot hmm that is probably going to be too big don't you think sorry about the shoddy camera work i sat down too fast and the chair sprung backwards I, I well if this were about twice this size i would be okay with this actually that might be fine i think it's probably fine it's like i was saying with the cactus over there it's just really about how you water the plant for water it makes sure there's nice sharp drainage so that water is not pooling up and saturating around the area that the roots haven't spread to yeah this should be good uh, that's pretty stinking cute too though i just i don't like agaves in a pot where the actual plant itself is about the same width as the side because it can make it difficult to find a safe spot to grab onto the container with whereas when they're in something that's nice short and wide you can you have a safety area these things very spiky very very spiky in the long run i would want it in this container i will have to drill a hole in there that's not a big deal i already have the attachment on the drill just need to go do that i should do that anyways actually because then i would be able to plant something in there yeah you know this is fine i'm good with this this is what i want to do with this particular plant so i'm gonna go ahead and do it i did add some more chunk to the mix just to make sure it's draining even better because this is an overpot that's an overpot too but it's a three dollar plant and i'm not as concerned about it and it's in a pot that's unglazed so it should dry just fine whereas this is in a container that is glazed and it's also quite large for the plant so i want to make sure that this is draining even better than i was making sure it was going to drain for that one over there clearly i need to make some more soil want a better look at that in the sunlight if i can get up close to it perlite sand bark chunks charcoal should drain pretty well and dry just fine but i'm still going to add some more of that pumice and charcoal and gravel mix in there just to be safe for all the reasons i talked about right before i went and got this batch of soil do y'all remember you you wouldn't know maybe you would know if you've been watching the channel for a long time few years ago i used to do these terrarium tuesday things during the winter hard to find stuff to do in the winter time get antsy so i thought oh, i'll do a little terrarium video every single tuesday and did that until i no longer had room in my house for more terrarium things but in one of those videos the terrarium it was an apothecary jar shattered during the video and this is all the filler that was in that container i saved all that that's why there's some pieces of gravel and there's some like nice big round stones that i wouldn't normally put into a mix like this it's come in handy sometimes to have it around just to throw into some soil blends that i think could use better drainage yeah oh this will be good water is going to wash right through that shouldn't be a problem i also should have grabbed a rag to wrap around this thing to pick it up out of the container something to wrap it with but maybe i'll just do it by hand or some tongs i should grab some tongs i don't think i'm going to though okay i think that should be enough soil in here eh, i could add a little bit more because i would imagine that this agave probably doesn't have a lot going on as far as roots are concerned it just doesn't feel like it so since this doesn't have a lot of foliage on it that's why i'm not bothering with tongs or anything like that just going to very gently lift it out this way everybody can have a look at what its potting mix looks like if the camera were in focus excuse you there we go do your job camera yeah so this is an uh, like a barky mix you can see it's a very chunky mix lots of bark blend that in 
with this mix over here. May as well, since I haven't potted this in there just yet. Only doing that because I trust Plant Delights. Most other growers, places that sell the plants, I would not use any of their old mix when moving a plant into a new container, but I figure it's just going to help with the aeration. So why not? Try and get this close to centered as I can at just the right level. Very gently and cautiously backfill this in. Trying my best to avoid getting much soil into the interlocking areas of those leaflets that are in there. Not the end of the world if some does get in there because its initial watering is going to be a heavy one so you have to flush the soil through and <laughs> make sure that it's not um, Get, get rid of the air pockets. Distracted by my phone, forgot what I was saying. Top dress that with some of the glass. That's all there is to it. Also trying to make sure to get some of these glass pieces underneath any pieces of the foliage that are laying on top of the soil just to keep them separated to help avoid rot. Don't want them sitting on top of wet soil, but I don't think that's going to be a problem here. There we go. That, yeah, okay, it is quite a large container for this cactus. I'm not worried about it. That mix is one that's going to drain very, very sharply. As far as agaves are concerned, the potatorums, 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 whatever you want to call them, they tend to be very sturdy agaves. I like how that looks. That looks nice. The orange with the blue, it, it does. I'm looking at the viewfinder on the camera. It looks smaller on the camera. There's probably, I would say about an inch on each side here. Y'all saw the root ball though, right? That's really what need to be basing this off of would be the size of the root mass. And there's probably a good inch and a half to two inches in each direction of the root ball, maybe an inch below it because its roots did go down fairly far. It's going to be able to live in this container for a very long time. All right, now yard work stuff. Let's go over there to that wall and talk about some projects over there. Oh, but yeah, one more thing. If you're using glass to top dress a container like this, to top dress your soil, don't put them in full sun all day long because the light reflect, reflect, blah, blah, the light refraction and reflections, it can end up cooking the plants. You have to be careful with that. Never had an issue with that when I've been using colored stones before. I've used blue and green and these like smoky, like fake quartz looking ones. That hasn't been an issue. But if you're using clear ones, then yeah, you might want to be careful if you do that, just because, yeah, like I just said, it might cook the plants. Another thing that I think I have an idea, I'm still kind of running it through my head. This might be a good pot for marmalade. I was using it to, you know, mix soil in for smaller containers. Since we're doing all this orange and blue stuff, why not grab the orange dahlia? marmalade to finally give this plant the life it deserves. This one, I think the tag says eight to 10 inches on here. If that's the case, then I don't have to worry about this container size. This size should be just fine. I don't know if y'all can see it. it says eight to 10 inches high and wide. Yeah, that would be fine. That's perfect. Okay, marmalade, gonna give you the life you deserve. Need to, gonna have to use a different potting mix. I don't wanna put that in a succulent mix, right? That that wouldn't be a good idea. Let's do the good old fashioned miracle Grow, in this one. Added some Osmocote in there and some of that miracle Grow rose food that has the higher levels of phosphate for blooming and rooting. And then the Osmocote's in there just to help keep things bouncing. Dahlia's fairly heavy feeders. Oh, and there's a very small handful of cotton burr compost added in here as well. Yeah, that'll be good. Definitely need to make more soil though. I'm off my game with my soil proportions this morning. Is this just potted up in some, yep, that's just like a random spongy potting mix. Not crazy about that. I don't like it, but those are really fine roots. I don't want to tear them up, so we're just going to have to make it work. Too much soil. Yep, yep, told you. I'm off my game. Or maybe I'm not off my game when I backfill this. There might be just enough soil I won't have to make more. That would be nice. Yeah, I think this is this is probably perfect. Update. Was not enough soil. It was off by like a quarter of a cup. So close. So, 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 so close. Going to go ahead, clean the plant up, get any bad foliage off of here. And we had those hot spells and the cool spells. So it has some damage 
on the inside need to clean out of there and some slug and snail stuff too i think i may go ahead hear my voice crack there it happens trying to open this up on the inside just to avoid powdery mildew because this was very wet very 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 wet and i don't like the light discoloration on those leaves even though that is more than likely just from the weather shifting around and it being cool and then hot and then cool and then hot and then cloudy and then sunny. Still, just to be safe, wanna make sure that it's opened up down below so air can get through. Also, I pulled three slugs off of this thing when I was repotting it. So I'm going to top dress it with the rest of this pumice that I have here. It's pumice and charcoal blended together. You know, it's the stuff that I was just mixing in with the cactus mix over there. The reason I'm doing that is because I found out a few years ago that when you top dress the containers with the pumice, that works really well to keep slugs and snails at bay because what happens is gruesome. The pumice cuts up the slugs and snails when they move across it and then they die. It's not that all that nice. I know, I don't feel great about it, but having a layer of that on top will help, hopefully, to keep them off of the plant. Also having this in a container and not sitting on the ground anymore, that alone should do the trick. I'm hoping to get to see some nice growth out of this one. Now that it's been repotted. I just love this dahlia. Isn't it just a beautiful dahlia? It's orange under orange. Get a better shot of it later. That's, that, that's all that needed to be done. Now, to the wall. Got the table cleaned off. <laughs> Waiting for the sun to get off of the wall so we can go over there and talk about it. And the sprinklers went off and this, that's what's happening over there now. Does this happen every year? It feels very deja vu. -y. I think this happens every year. I have to replace that sprinkler head probably every single, what, May or June? Something like that. I just shut it off, it should turn off the Wi-Fi controller's new. Okay, it works, that's good. Now, if I can find the cap that went on there, I might be able to fix it without having to dig the whole thing up and put a new one in. I do not enjoy doing that, I hate doing that. I have a feeling that the cap is probably, it's more than likely in here somewhere. I should turn the pool cleaner off, it's gonna suck it up. Although I'm not gonna get in there right now and try and find it either, so, I well, so. I don't know what to do. Back to the wall. <laughs> you done? Someone's pooped. He is so tired. Here's what I've been thinking for over here. For many, many years, I have wanted to plant something along the top of this brick wall that would come over the edge and just trail and be beautiful. I've wanted to do that with Super Junior Vista bubble gums, but with sunlight, that's one of the things to keep in mind. One of the reasons I also waited to talk about this, so you can see the lighting over here after four o'clock in the afternoon. There's not much, there's more down there, which is new. Didn't used to have that because of the neighbor's trees. So at the very least I can get some planted up here. Why did I zoom out when I need to talk about what's going on over here? So at the very least I can get some planted up in here along these two edges that will come over the sides. The thing with the Vista bubble gums is they're pretty vigorous. I've planted those in part shade many times and they still grow wonderfully. They're not as full and bushy right? They're going to be a little bit more leggy, but they still flower, not quite as profusely, but they still do something more than most other petunias would do. So I would, I guess I'd either have to skip this spot or clean it up down here. I'd probably clean it up and still skip it because there's not much light here. I could do those Vista bubble gums from right there and bring them all the way down to right around here. And that, that also comes down to, do I feel like buying a whole bunch of them? I have 10, which I know sounds like a lot. I need two of them for something else. And I think for that instant gratification, which I won't get because they're just little annuals, but I won't want to wait until August or September for it to look really good. So I want to space them probably within about a foot to 18 inches of each other. Typically, I think two feet would be fine because they get really, really big, maybe 18 inches. Bring that in a little bit, right? Because the don't necessarily want to wait for everything to do their thing. So I need to measure, but if I have eight of them and I were to go one every 18, then that would only cover eight feet. And I could, you know, 50% of that bump it up to 18 to 20 inches. That'll take me to 12 feet. So I would just, I would only need a few more. I think that might be kind of cool. And I don't know how well they would even grow over here, but there's a good amount of morning sun. So um, I think it might be worth 
a shot. Something else I'll want to do in the morning. We're just talking right now. In the morning, the lighting will be better and I'll get to work on this. But the uh, Rainbow's End Hostas. I think about putting those in a ring around the base of this arb right here. Nothing else will grow here. And it's supposed to be a sturdy hosta. Most hostas are pretty sturdy, at least of the newer types. I just have a few of them down below. I think that would look really nice. And I also have a ton of impatience to plant up here as well. I experimented with that last year. I planted impatience and caladiums on both sides here. And the ones over there grew really well. The ones over here, not so much. But, but the sun is now more even on each side. So I should probably go ahead and do it. I'm starting to wonder though if I should use sun impatience instead of just the right, I already have the regular impatience, so I have so many of them because this is what I was going to do. Uh, I'll think about that. The regular impatience can take a good amount of sun and the lighting out here by like, I don't know, mid-August, there's a lot more shade. So it'd just be getting through the hottest parts of July, which is when they typically need to cut back anyways. Uh, something to think about. I'm gonna poke around and see if I can find the, the top of that sprinkler head and maybe get that fixed because it is an important thing so that I can keep the plants water. I do not want to have to hand water that entire bed. No, thank you. Did that for the last two years. Don't want to do that anymore. Looks like someone's starting to feel better. Perking up a little bit. Don't know what you've been doing, working on the diet, TRT. Something's going on there. Fresh potty mix, sunlight and water. Suppose that's all it really takes for a cactus. I started on the petunias and decided that it is the next morning, by the way, hence why lighting is different. I remembered last year I did this, at least in this spot and maybe one other spot down there as an experiment. And when I went to water in this first one that I planted, I realized why I didn't like it, why I didn't like it in this spot specifically. This area is very sloped for drainage. There's a drain over here and a drain, well, I was pointing over there. Another one over there that controls the water from these houses up here, takes it down to another thing of drainage that's down here that goes down to a storm sewer. And uh, that, so I can't really adjust the slope here. And when you water, it just gushes dirt down the front. I have drip up here, but I don't think I have the water pressure to add any more heads. So uh, I th just, there's one there. We'll see how it does. It really is more relevant to the hostas right here. I'm not going to be able to give them the soakings and drenchings that they need in this spot. And the green giant is finally, after three or four years, starting to do what green giants are supposed to do and put on a decent amount of size. So uh, I don't, how much light are they going to, I think I could, I just punched my camera. I think I could find a better place to put those. I, they look so good there though, wouldn't they? Especially if I prune out the Lespedeza, the I this, I should, I should do that, but I need to finish this thought first. I really, I'm gonna grab my clippers and get that done though. And I popped a couple more in over down here. If you notice when I filmed down here, I hide behind the shrubbery. Because <laughs> I, I feel like such a freak walking around with all those windows pointed at me with the camera. Whatever, I may have come up with a solution for that. I went ahead and I put in three of them right here. There are going to be some impatience behind this row as well in caladiums. And I have some very special begonias coming in the mail, hopefully in the next week or two. So I don't wanna to go too overboard with this area because it's this side and the other side are getting a really big makeover. So it's, this will have to do. This is good for now. And then over here, the Crimson Queen Japanese Maple. I haven't set this all the way down inside the container yet, but, well, no, I have. It's all the way down the container. I need to lift it up. I just dropped it in there to see if it would even fit. And it does, barely, but it fits. These will go eight to 10 feet. So that's going to have to work its way through the trunks of that mimosa here which I don't think will be a problem. Should be good. The main thing I have to look out for here is that this needs to get enough sun to stay red. And it's underneath a tree here, right? A very big tree. I have a Crimson Queen in my front that doesn't get very much sun, maybe four to six hours a day in the morning. And it's still very, very red. Same thing with my neighbors. And uh, I've been, just been watching around, looking at them throughout town kind of the same situation, so I think it'll be okay, but I don't want to actually pop this up into this container until I know for sure that it'll stay nice and red. I do think that that is the perfect plant for this pot though, isn't it? It's a beautiful, beautiful crimson. This has a great graft on it. 
was done very, very well. I don't know who the grower is that came down from Oregon. One of the nurseries here goes up and hand picks their Japanese maples and a lot of their conifers and has them trucked down from Oregon and other areas in the Pacific Northwest. And it's just, it's a beaut. That's a really big, nice looking plant. It's hard to tell probably on camera, but that container is, I believe it's an old pot. So the measurement's kind of on it. I think it's 32 or 34 inches across on the inside and 30 inches high. And that's in an oddly shaped 25 gallon container on the inside. So it's a decent sized tree. It's probably about five and a half, six feet tall. It's a good size crimson queen. Have a couple of shrubs over here that I need to plant up, but I need to get this hedge over here handled first, which I think will be happening in next week's video. It should be, it has to. At least I have to go get them. I have to pick them up from the nursery because I told them I would. So I need to rent a truck and go get those. That all leads me to these Pragan viburnums. So there's one here. I planted another one just behind that, uh, the, the, behind the, who are you? The Bismarckia. I'd like to take that line of Pragan viburnums all the way down this hill here. Have them about five, six feet out from the fence. The dogs can still run around and play with each other. So I was thinking it would be a good idea to pop by a nursery. Uh, Chesterfield Valley Nursery here, they have an amazing selection of plants, usually some good sized viburnum. So I'm gonna pop out there real quick, see what they have and maybe get some more. If not, there are plenty of other things to do, but let's go see what they have there. Hmm, sun to shade, it is a U, 200 a pop. I mean, considering they don't grow all that quickly and it's a specialized variety. It's not terrible. I think that looks pretty good. I don't think I like it more than the laurels though, but it's hardy zone four, so uh, more reliable, maybe? Those are pretty cool. It said thunderstorm white lightning crepe myrtles. Nice. Ooh, 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 I like this. This is good. This is beautiful. The size of that pot. Hey, 615, actually not that bad for this at all. This is, that's in a 150 gallon container. I actually, I'm absolutely in love with this floral standard. Portuguese floral, list, 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 that one, can you see it? That's the name. Considering these are, I, they're freaking huge. And they have two, and I have a spot where I need a couple of evergreens. There's no way I can get a whole dog that big for them. That'd be pretty awesome. I don't think I have enough sun for them either, but it's fun to dream. That's a sight to see. All these rhododendrons in bloom. Beautiful. I found where I was trying to find myself. They're just little gems. Hoping to see some of the Pecaris magnolias, but not seeing them. This place is gigantic. I don't think... I'm gonna conquer the whole place in one visit because I can't stay very long, but happy with what I'm seeing so far, getting some ideas. See a buckeye, not something I need more of, but always happy to see them. I like more people planted them, they're such great shrubs. Tree, not shrub. Beautiful plants. Isn't this just glorious? Everything here, phenomenal and beautiful. You hear the birds? Probably not, I'm talking too much. Yeah, see, it just, it keeps going and going and going. It just, there's so much to see here. And this is a third, maybe, not even, of this place. Those are brackens. Nice looking brackens, though. Okay. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. I don't know why I didn't wear shoes. That would have been smart. I know it's all gravel here. I'm not sure what I think. Oh my god, the gnats. The gnats are insane.
Oh my god, that was so relaxing and peaceful. I love that nursery so much. Not a hit as far as the viburnums go. I'm going to keep looking around, see if I can find something larger, preferably something that's burlapped and field grown. But I know that they have them, so I can go back there if I can't find anything better. Those gumdrop topiaries, oh my god. Those were beautiful. I don't, I couldn't get them, right? There's no way. I, there's no, no need to even really discuss it other than I really like gumdrop shaped topiaries. I don't think that's the proper terminology for that shape of topiary, but it's what's stuck in my head. So we're just, we're gonna go with it. I'm just trying to imagine if I were over there looking at that hill with that staircase and a couple of gumdrop topiaries on each side, that would be magnificent. You can't really see it from here. I need to prune that Lespedeza. I think I talked about that before I went to the nursery, didn't I? I'd like to have that wall more cleared up. So I need to do that. I grabbed my pruners, so I'm ready to go with it. Just haven't done it because I've been talking to y'all and doing the plant things. Could start my own gumdrop topiaries with a different type of plant, but I have to figure out what kind. I wouldn't want to do laurels because that spot's pretty exposed up there. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's something to think about because those were awesome, but it's also going to take a lot of time. You can't dig very big holes up there. There's a lot of gravel in the ground for drainage. I talked about how all the water up there works its way through this hill and down into another system. It's a very complex situation when it comes to pipes and drainage in this yard. So whatever would go up there would have to be, uh, I don't know, I don't think I'd be able to dig a hole for anything larger than like maybe a 15 gallon container. And even that might be pushing it. I may end up going cannas up there just for this year, just because money wise, I'm in so heavy on the arbs in the hedge down there that doing something really special in the spot where the honeysuckles were removed might have to wait. I've been thinking about cannas. I hit, we're gonna be talking about cannas here for a few minutes. I got this pathetic thing in the mail and I wanna talk about it. We'll get to that in just a minute. Grab my pruners so I can remember to prune up that Lespedeza while we're at it and over here. The banana cannas. Love them, they're great, they're absolutely massive. Actually, too big. I would like to have a row of them in the back, but they're gonna choke out the gingers over here in this corner. So I'm going to have to come in here and do some dividing on them. Kind of missed the opportunity to do that as far as the best timing to do that. So uh, I don't know if it, with what I get out of here, I don't know if it'll be stuff that I can transplant. That's what I was going to say. Give it a shot, of course, instead of throwing away what I pull out. But those rhizomes, you know, they're rooted out and doing their thing now. So if I dig them up, I'm going to have to cut them back and just, you know, keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. But I need to get, like, there's a whole row of them in front here that needs to come out. And I could go ahead and pop them down further that way, potentially, or the privacy stuff I'm working on, maybe up here, right behind the steps up there. Just do banana cannas this year. Or if I go the rhizome route, just order more from Horn, then plop a rhizome in every like two feet or so for like, what would that be? A, uh, what, six, 12, 18, 18 and a half feet. Okay, so I'd, need to, I'd have to get a lot of them. But to get it going, I have a good amount that I could pull out from here. I have, I would say I would need to be coming in and dividing from uh, probably something like these right here and all the way through would be my guess. So I'd get a decent amount of them out of this in order to free up that corner for the, the gingers are more important to me than the cannas. That's what I'm getting at. So a lot of these that are in the front, I'd like to pull those out and continue to let them grow against the back. I have no problem with some cannas growing up and covering the siding. Don't need to look at the siding. Siding's ugly. Thinking I'm seeing soft scale or mealy bugs on the plants over here, but I'm realizing it's sawdust. Can we see the sawdust? You see it down there? That's, that's from the carpenter bees digging holes in the side of the house. That's what they do. So that's a thought for something that's going to be more immediate this year to uh, cover things up so there's not as much of a view of the mud and all the noise and everything in that area. But it's not a long-term solution. I wouldn't want that to be uh, what I'm waiting on every single year because then I have to wait until like mid-June to July for that to actually come up and fill in the fence area. I don't no, that's not going to work for me. I prefer evergreens up there, but since I have them, maybe that's what I should do. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on that. Nope, was not recording. Oh, it's okay. Only got three things cut off. I'm just saying to me, it makes the most sense to uh, go with things that are going to grow really fast 
for this year up there. And then I have the rest of the summer to poke around at nurseries and see if I find something I like for up there. And then I'm not going to feel as rushed to get in there and immediately go into like an investment type plant just in order to create some quick privacy. May as well use something that grows quickly to give quick privacy for that purpose. Something just squeaked at me back here. What was that? Is there a critter over here? Probably just a bird. I don't know. I'm not worried about it. Cannas are tropical looking. They'll grow quickly, but they offer absolutely nothing as far as privacy goes in the fall and in the winter, right? As, as much as I talk about, oh, there's so much to do out here. That is true. There's a lot to do out here, but we have all summer to do the majority of it try and get through the main priorities. I do try and get through things that like in an order of what needs to be done. So I'm working more with the annuals and bringing houseplants outside right now. If I have shrubs around that need to go in the ground, I'm getting them in the ground. With the exception of the arbs, I think I might be, I'm gonna be reaching out to some people for some help with those because there's a lot of them and I talk about how hard it is to dig up here. So rather than spend half a day digging each one of those holes, might as well get a group of people together to make that easier. This is better. It's a little, little bit messy, but you can see the wall again. God, I have these baby gates up here from when Turbo was a puppy and I had all my oleanders and toxic plants over here in this area. This is where I kept those things so that I'd have to worry about him eating those. Y'all remember that? When I got Turbo, 2021, summer of 2021, I became a paranoid mess and just started hiding all of my plants that were even slightly toxic and even just getting rid of a lot of them. And uh, I don't don't know if I needed to do that. We'll never know. I don't regret it. Rather have my dog than some sago palms and a few extra oleanders, that's for sure. The Lespideza thumbergii, a great plant. It comes up, trails over this wall, and it's beautiful. It gets covered in flowers. The pollinators love it past couple years though I've talked about how it's just, it's a bit too much comes out too far over the wall and it makes it kind of difficult to walk around the pool which is a safety concern and I just aesthetically I'm not a fan of how that looks but it has spread itself back here which is nice to have it back there even though it's not supposed to spread it's doing it after about a decade it's doing some moving back there and I think that that's actually okay because the further back it is, the less it's going to hang over the wall. So I'm just going to let whatever it's doing back here do its thing if it gets enough light to keep doing its thing. Clean up this wall area here. There's also a lot of little bayberries coming up over here too. That's new. I didn't know that they did that, but look, it's coming, it's growing out of the wall. Didn't know that that was the thing. It's like a whole entire tree sticking out over there. Point is just that this backyard looks a lot better when this wall area is cleaned up and doesn't have a lot of stuff growing over the side, with the exception of maybe those Super Tunia Vista bubble gums, that may end up looking kind of cool. It's more about the top of the wall. I want the bricks up top to be cleared, not have shrubbery growing out from the cracks that are in there. What's that about? Come on. Look at that. There's an entire tree coming out from in here. Not, okay, that is dramatic. Yes, Turbo, you're too close to the clippers. I don't like that. There we go. That's better. Got that tidied up. I don't know if I'm going to come in and try and clear out from in there so much just because, well, it's offering privacy. I'm also curious to see if, now that all the trees are gone from the neighbor's backyard, if this bayberry here, if it'll bayberry, what did, oh, my brain stopped. Maybe this bayberry might straighten itself out some. It's been leaning over the patio for a few years and I've trimmed it up to like an archway so you can walk underneath it. It started leaning a few years ago, reaching for the sun this way because it was shaded that way, but now there's going to be light over there, so I imagine it's going to get more growth over there, which means I should probably give it a heavy prune. I don't know if I'll do that or not, because I really like this plant nice, big, and green. Also, could be an option. As far as hedging out that back area, the bayberries, northern bayberries, are really cold hardy, mostly evergreen here. It's very, it's like a wax myrtle. The broadleaf evergreen, fairly quick growing shrub, normally pretty cheap too. So I could probably get a few of those to put across that back. That might be better than the banana cannas. They respond well to pruning. You can shape them pretty easily. Clearly they can go a little wild over time, but it took about a decade. So I'd say it's not like it's invasive. At least not this far north. I know the wax myrtles, that can be a different story. Okay, that looks better. More clean and tidy. Still going to think about ideas with those. Now that it's more cleared up, can you see what I was thinking here? Just having a hosta here, hosta here, hosta there. 
I do think that would look nice, but for how long? Like, how long is it going to take for the green giant to shade those out? Pastas can be such long-lived plants and put them someplace where they'll last a really long time. I don't think that this is it, probably. I'd have to lift them in a couple years, so just why bother? Oh, seems like a bad idea. Give it two days, max. Two more days. That thing's coming down. I already filed the Amazon return. We know it's gonna happen. Have a new one coming in the mail. Cause it is broken at the collar. It broke by like day three. I don't get it. It's not very windy at all. Like there's hardly even a breeze. What's the deal? The new umbrella doesn't have the tilt feature on it. So that collar, that metal part that's on there, that won't be there and that's where they all keep breaking. So maybe this will be the end of the saga of the umbrellas. Ideally, because so wasteful, like all this crap going into the landfills because people can't just make an umbrella that doesn't break with a very gentle breeze. I only like the tilt feature because at a certain time of day between like 5.45 and 6, obviously that changes throughout the year, there's a, a the sun <laughs> comes through right here at a lower angle because it sets over here and it is blinding. Like you don't want to be sitting at this table when it's doing that. But maybe when the palm trees get here and I'll have that Edenidia there, that may block it. I don't know, whatever the case, I just think me and the tilt umbrellas, it's not meant to be. And that's fine, it is, it's just, it is what it is. I would rather just have an umbrella that doesn't break constantly than have to deal with all of the chaos. New can of here, kinda hard to see because orange umbrella, don't know what I was thinking. The new one that's coming is gonna be blue. Tie Rainbow is its name, this is from Brian's. Has a really nice variegation. I have a video that'll be coming out either after this one, that'll be in the middle of the week after a Wednesday video. I have a whole bunch of color cases that we're going to be talking about. And this showed up in that order and I very briefly talked about it in that video, but it's not the point of the video, so I didn't say much about it. It's a beautiful canna. The variation's lovely. Here it is on the screen. Ooh, isn't that nice? Love it. Tony Avent of uh, Plant Delights Nursery. This is their introduction. I don't know if that means that they created this one or they just sourced it and brought it in. Because here's the thing, when you look at Brian's Botanicals website, which is where I ordered this from, which is why it's so tiny and why it was 30, this was $32.99. This puny little thing was $32. Like You know what size plants you're getting when you order from them. Bone soft variegation, it's not too loud and extreme. They say on Brian's site that this is a Plant Delights nursery slash, I mean, look at, I don't really understand this sentence. Plant Delights nursery slash this, question mark? I don't, what does that mean? The point is they're saying it's an introduction from Plant Delights. But when I look at Plant Delights description of it, which is where I would have ordered this from, but they were out of stock on it. You get it in a two quart pot for less money, $26 from them. They send nice size cannas here. Wanna order cannas? They're a great place to order them from. They say for something truly unique, we are pleased to introduce canna tie rainbow. Okay, it says we are pleased to introduce canna. Okay, so it does say right there. They're not saying it's an introduction of theirs, they're saying they introduced it. Okay, that's where I was confused. I was like, wait, who made this? It gets, there's more to it. There's more reasons I get confused, which offers a unique leaf variegation pattern. Then it says in parentheses, reportedly radiation induced. But even, so it's the fact that it says reportedly that makes me think that this isn't one of the cannas that they came up with on their own. Because if it were, then why would it say reportedly? I think they would know for sure if it was that. So I don't know who made this one. And that's not really the point. I don't really care. The whole point here is why is it so little? $32.99, come on. It's fine. I expected a small plant to come. That's generally what I expect when I order from Brian's Botanicals are usually very small plants for fairly high prices. So the plants that are going to be in the video that I was talking about, the Colocasias, they were a good price and they were the size that I would have expected them to be. That was all good with those. I just why pathetic and little. It's a canna. It's going to grow. This will probably go back in the dump garden just for some extra texture and color over there. I just wanted to grow it out and see how it looks. I like the variegation. If it is radiation induced, then, well, you know, whatever. It's a neat looking canna. I thought I'd share it with you. If you can find it from Plant Delights, I'd give them a shot because they really do. They send nice cannas for the most part. I've never been disappointed with a canna that I ordered from them. Okay, now I do these, I need to, I need to plant these begonias, don't I? Those have just been sitting there. I keep forgetting about them because I set them there and it was like a set it and forget it sort of thing. There was also just moment of 
weakness when it came to these planters going on. Was that a lot of movement? I'm sorry, sort of, half sorry. That's just kind of what you get when you come here and watch my videos. I also hadn't planted these because like I was talking about with the banana cannas, I was thinking momentarily about pulling the bamboos out of these planters and putting banana cannas in them, which I think it would, that would be beautiful. But I know how that would play out. What would happen would be mid to late summer, the angle of the sun's going to change. Those cannas would lean forward at a very sharp angle over the patio. I'll complain about them nonstop, have to stake them up, tie them up. And then in the winter, I'm gonna regret it because there won't be anything here to look at. I like having the bamboo out here in the winter. Yeah, it had a rough go this winter, but it doesn't go from 70 degrees to negative six all that often. Hopefully it won't happen again. Not thrilled with the amount of growth that came out of them this year. They did fill out and they're flushing back out for the most part. There are a few stems I need to cut out, a few canes that need to go. Same thing with that reflex, uh, it, I don't, I, it's really not doing great. I need to do something with that plant. I've had it for years. I don't really know why it's decided to throw a fit when the care for it hasn't changed one bit. It looks like it just needs a good cut back and it should flush back out. That's another reason I hadn't planted these begonias in here yet was just because I was thinking about potentially doing something different here. Uh, I could have explained all of that while I was actually in the process of planting these up instead of just standing around pointing at stuff, not getting things done. Other thing, I, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tight fit. But I have my hand knife here, my gardening knife, these things. Fantastic, I love this one. It's one of the ones from Fisker, Fiskers. Has a sharp blade on one side, regular blade on the other side, has a little hook in it. It's great for digging out weeds. So far, it has been very reliable when it comes to slicing out roots. It's been pretty reliable. I forgot there's a shepherd's hook in here. Probably would not have been great for the blade. Yeah, look at it, it just slices right through everything like butter. Come through, carve out all the way, okay. That should be good. Probably like three or four passes should be enough to get through everything, I think. I feel like a little bit of resistance right there. There we go. Yeah, that should be, I don't, I, why am I talking like I've done, I haven't done anything yet. You find a bucket to pull this out and dump that dirt into. There are a lot of different opinions when it comes to cutting roots and pruning roots on plants. To me, it comes down to the type of plant. I don't think that it's a one answer for everything <laughs> on the subject. That was a stubborn one. With bamboo, you absolutely can very easily overdo it, especially when they're in a container. You prune out too much and it, that can set the plant back. Sometimes it can even kill them. I'm not worried about that since the majority of the clump is growing back there and I could feel it with the knife. I wasn't going in and taking out all that much. A little bit more, could probably cut out from in there, open that up some more. I have some plants like uh, my mule palms. When I give those a root prune, which I generally do when I repot them, and just give them a slight cut back, mostly because you have to, because they get so root brown, you have to do some slicing to loosen their roots up. They always flush back out and look great, except for the last time I repotted them. I don't think that they are a fan of that Espoma mix. I've even been thinking that when those push out some new fronds, because you know they're recovering from some winter damage, when they're looking more sturdy and able to handle it, I may go ahead and pull them from their containers, give them a very gentle root prune, and pop them up into a different mix. I just have not been able to get the moisture retention that I would prefer to have with the Espoma mix. Not, I don't know if it's a climate thing, bad batches. I'm not really sure. That looks good. That's beautiful. Should I add a trailer, something over the front? I kind of like the fronts of these containers. So I don't know if it really needs it, but it would be nice to have a little bit more color right here, especially because the adenidia palm will be here in the middle whenever that shows up a couple weeks. And it's harder to get a trailer in the front of that one because it's, well, the roots have really taken up that container and I don't want to prune on them too much. Let's see, I have two of the Royal Velvet Super Tunias, which might look nice, have some purple coming down in there. I also have a couple of White Knight Alyssums, which traditionally I do like over here as well. I don't know, I wasn't crazy about the Alyssums over here last year. I liked the scent that you got from them in the morning time, but they were kind of messy and uh, they uh, ended up, I don't know, they just, they didn't appeal to me. I don't really know how to describe it. Y'all know, I love an alyssum, so if I'm saying I wasn't into it in a certain spot, that probably means something, right? Uh, I have a moment to think on that because I still have to do this container over here. I'm gonna do that and figure something out for the front. 
You no. No, we can do it. Y'all are just gonna let me stick a begonia in this pot and call it a day. Surrounded by gingers and all kinds of fun things that I would normally dream of having enough of to be able to stuff in these in a, a begonia? No. They're beautiful. I love them. The top hat begonias, they're great. And uh, I look forward to doing other things with them in the garden. But I don't think that that's the direction I want to go. I sat back and I looked at it and I was like, this looks like something that would just be thrown together by a random landscaping company at like a public park or the zoo, which does have beautiful landscaping, but no, we can do something better here. Maybe a ginger? That might look good in the, oh, I didn't have the camera set over there. We'll try that again and reenact the fun part where I dropped it into the container. It went like this. Oh yeah, hey, maybe a ginger? Look at that. That's beautiful. Much better. Yeah, yeah, that I can get behind. I also have the Alpinia Zarembits, the variegated. I don't know which I'd want to go with. Probably these purparatas, I think. So that, that, yeah, they have really nice long-lived flowers. The Zarembits, they're not going to bloom this year. They bloom on second year growth. And the only hesitation I have here would be sunlight. Like they, they it could be a bit much. I have to wait and find out. It would be the case for you. I mean, look at this one. I just watered it. They're such babies. The direct sun gets on them and they just, at least when they're in containers in the ground, they're not quite as bad about that. I would like this. Red cone gingers, I think that would look beautiful in these. Yeah, it's not like a big floral display, but they're nice, long lasting, beautiful tropical flowers that the hummingbirds are really going to like. Yeah, that's good. I have some heliconias coming, but I feel like when I've done heliconias here in the past, they just weren't getting enough light to flower and the, why would I, why? Why bother doing something that I know doesn't work? This I've never tried. Let's try something new. And the begonias, uh, there are lots of places I can put those. It just, to me, that was screaming more accent than stunner right this is to me that's stunning maybe a bit much but that's okay i kind of like things when they're a bit much no reason to take it easy only have one life to live right may as well do the best you can with everything you're doing well, that was impressively preachy for a gardening video wasn't it i like that i like the texture they're more full this is good this is i mean I'll, hopefully it'll look better when i actually get them potted in there i'm gonna have to dig those holes slightly larger but yeah, I'm gonna tinker around this some more and come back when I'm done. Huh? Yeah? Good? I love it. I think it's great. I haven't filled these back in yet. I have. He didn't bring it into frame. That was dumb of me. Down here. Still not in frame. I tried. I'm trying, guys. Let's see. There we go. Is that better? Standard houseplant potting mix. Several handfuls of cotton burr compost. I really like this stuff. Here's the bag. If you want to see cotton burr compost. That's it. Right there. That's what the bag looks like good stuff. Osmica, which is a pretty well balanced slow release fertilizer. And then some of the Shake and Feed Rose and Bloom has earthworm castings, other great stuff in it. It is a 10% nitrogen, 18% phosphate, 9% on the potassium, and it has calcium, magnesium, copper, iron, manganese. I like the proportion of it for ginger, the phosphorus that's in there will help with rooting and blooming. Where's my mixer? And that's what that looks like all blended together. It's a good blend, particularly for being organically rich and moisture retention. That's what the gingers want is something that's organically rich, good amount of moisture retention and drainage. And I had to make sure that it wasn't too loose of a mix because well then everything that, all the water that goes to the bamboo in the back will wash forward to the front, which the ginger will appreciate, but the bamboo, not so much. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I love it. Yeah, there's still lots of mess to clean up. I doubt I'll be keeping the Longilobas over there. I, actually, I have another spot where I would like to put those. But for right now, this is pretty good. Still need to power wash and do some cleaning up and scraping, but I wanted to get these planted up first. I'd actually I'd like for the Adenidia to get here and get that planted up too, so a couple more weeks for that. Not heavy with annual flower color, but remember there'll be a whole different giant plant here in the middle in a couple of weeks that I'm sure I'll be adding more colorful things to. This is what the flowers look like, the inflorescence on these alpinias as they start to get going. This one hasn't opened up all the way. I don't even know if it will. That one may end up being a dud just because it's been through a lot. You know, it went from the greenhouse to out here and then lots of temperature shifting and light shifting, but there are lots more little buds on these. You can see them coming up here. Don't know what kind, some kind of preparata, right? That's the only thing I can figure. They did have tags, but I don't trust these tags. 
Let's see, one of them just says ginger, not very useful. And then the other one says ginger variegated. It says variegated green shell, which that, no. This, that's variegated green shell, a very thirsty variegated green shell. These cones, purpuratas. Like I said, nice long-lived flowers throughout the season. This growing seeds, God, there are gnats everywhere. They'll have these red inflorescences that will open up more. They'll swell and get bigger than that across the tips of the growths. The hummingbirds are going to like them. Very lush, very tropical look to them. And again, there'll be something different in the middle where there'll be more color. This is just kind of a jumping off point. I am going to have to get some bender board, you know, like the garden edging stuff to put inside these containers because I was only able to dig those holes deep enough that the root ball was about flush with the surface and when i watered these it was just soil washing out all over the place need a lip for a reason right it's not a big deal that's an easy thing to do just have to remember to grab some next time at the hardware store get your bender board cut it to the right size of the pot and just push it down along the edge and you have a raised gap that's in there shouldn't be too noticeable i don't think it'll be unattractive i can put trailers and whatnots to come over the sides from those I didn't bother with a trailer on the front of these because there was no room to squeeze anything in with those root balls on the gingers. At least right not down the right not <laughs> at least not right down the very fronts of the containers because the root balls press right up against the side of the pottery there. And I personally think it looks weird to have something going on each side and open in the middle. But if I have some extra things around in a few weeks, then maybe I'll plop some stuff in there for spellers. I don't I don't know. I don't think it needs them. I like those pots. I think they look nice. This is just getting off in the right direction. I think it looks good. Nice and lush. Yeah, the begonias were more of a quick pop of color, but for this spot, this is more what I wanted. It's more my speed. Okay, I do, I have to wrap it up. I don't know how long the video is, but I got a lot of other stuff I need to do out here and transition into a different video. So comment down below and say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Even like that, I'm sorry, is that too in your face? I'm sorry, Turbo. Bye-bye.